Hi there, my name is Girish and I'm the product manager responsible for file and print products. This is the short sneak peek into the new OES management console that we will be shipping with the OES 2022 release due in the second half of fiscal year 2022. We will understand the current pain points, goal of the project, delivery model, and a quick demo of the all new console. Let's start with a brief introduction to the file and print services. You may already be using one or more of these services. So let's go over this quickly. The file services provide a platform for storing and collaborating on user data. Your users get access to their data when they are within the corporate network or over the VPN on any of their Mac and Windows devices. While your administrator stays in control of uh, who gets access to what. The file services also enable your users who are on the move and need access to their data from anywhere and on any of their mobile, laptop, or desktop devices. Your businesses may also require your users to collaborate with other internal or external users, your customers. Again, administrator stays in control of who can share data with whom. In the current situation where most of users work from remote location, it is essential to provide continued access remotely. The print services on the other hand provides a secure platform to print from any mobile, desktop or laptop device to any of your modern or legacy printers. It comes packed with features like walk-up printing to release print job to any printer and quick printing for clientless printing. It also supports Apple AirPrint with certified printers. The OES management today involves several tools. Tools like NRM and iManager provide the ability to manage several file and print services. However, it requires additional tools like NSSMU, NURM, and in some cases, command line tools to fully accomplish a management activity. You may start with iManager to create a pool, have it joined to your Active Directory or DSFW domain using NSSMU, and set up storage tearing using NRM or CIS management tools. Each of these tools are built on different platform and technology. This requires you to be aware of the capabilities of each tool how to deploy and patch them, and ultimately learn to use them. While we end up spending additional effort in keeping up with the advances in different technological stacks. While we fully understand the need for command line tools and stay fully invested in improving it, we want to provide an improved web-based management experience. To address these challenges, we have been working on a project codenamed Sahyadri. The primary goal of the project Sahyadri is to provide a highly responsive, simple, and secure management tool for managing any small or large heterogeneous deployment. Let's dive deep and dissect to better understand the goals of Project Sahyadri. We have expert designers working on the UX rather than developers. The new management experience will be built on modern technology like Angular, providing highly responsive UI on any device. This is also easy to deploy and debug. It helps us deliver faster and address issues quickly. We are also going to adapt to the MicroFocus standard UX aspects library for UI controls, resulting in a consistent look and feel when compared to other MicroFocus products. The new tool will be available in the same set of 10 languages that OES support and will be built considering accessibility requirement. Simplified workflows. One of the primary goal is to consolidate workflows requiring different tools and provide end-to-end -end execution in the new management experience. We're going back to basics and studying every feature when building management workflows for it. To keep the learning time minimal, we are building the new workflows as a new natural extension over the current tools you are familiar with. We know that most of you have more than one server and in some instance, instance several tens or even hundreds of servers in different regions and directory trees. The new tool will allow managing multiple servers simultaneously. All management operations are available even when you select one or any number of servers from any tree. Dashboards are a great way to learn and manage storage. We are grouping them under two categories, basic and advanced analytics. The basic analytics provide information at individual pool or volume level. When dealing with a large deployment, you may want to get holistic view of your entire storage estate, and that would be part of the advanced analytics. We've also understood that management involves more than one administrator operating at different roles. We're going to enable the role-based management 
providing you to assign different administrator performing different tasks of file and print management. We understand the growing importance of security, especially under current circumstances. Every module in the new management experience is protected by authentication and resources, in this case, files and printers are protected by an additional layer of industry leading authorization system. The authentication is backed by a built in token based modern authentication system. It can also work with any other identity provider like one SSP provider or Azure Active Directory to provide single sign on experience. In addition to this basic authentication, you may also choose to enforce additional factors of authentication like SMS OTP, biometric, PIN, etc. We introduce support for additional directory types like Active Directory, Azure Active Directory over the time and ended up building different tools to manage these identities. However, these workflows are now built into the new management tool with the ability to manage any file and print services for Active Directory or Azure Active Directory in addition to the built-in e-directory. For example, you can manage file system rights for Active Directory and e-directory users from a single pane. We are able to accomplish all this thanks to the new core services built using interfaces that suit the functionality. For example, we went with NSS libraries to manage pools and volumes, which is way faster compared to the current method involving writing and reading from the virtual underscore admin file system. The new, the new core involves a centralized server front ending several OES servers with a lightweight management services running on every OES server. They both provide REST based interfaces for better scalability and extension. The UI is also modular and interacts with the centralized core server over the REST interface. We will expose and document these APIs to help you build your own tools to suit your needs, like automation or custom workflows. Now that we have fully understood the goals of the project, let's talk about its availability. We plan to deliver Project Sahyadri in different phases, starting with the upcoming OES 2022 release due in the second half of fiscal year 2022. The first phase includes storage, cluster, and protocols management, along with the ability to manage files and folders. We will provide Identity Console for managing directory services like user, group, and partition management. The subsequent phases will be delivered as quarterly updates over the channel on OES 2022. We also seek your inputs and feedback during this time to improve on the experience. Please report any enhancement requests over the Microfocus community site and our OES Ideas portal. I'm going to pass here so that you can take a look at the different features coming and in different phases. Now let's take a quick look at the new management console in action. Please note that this is an early preview of the tool and many of the capabilities are undergoing active development, hence may evolve over time before the OES 2022 release. In this deployment, I have a four node cluster. The new management REST server is running on each of these nodes with one of them also hosting the central core server and an Angular based web application. You are now seeing the login screen of the new management console. I am going to key in the administ administrator credentials and the tree detail. You can also log in uh, to your other identity providers by using the login using SSO option. In this case, I am going to log in to the built in e-directory. Once logged in, you are presented with the default landing page that is home page. At the top, you have a, a header with the uh, information regarding uh, the notifications, uh, the help information, and uh, the list of actions. On the left-hand side, you have a pane uh, to navigate between various aspects of the management console. Uh, let's do a deep dive into what's available in the home page. You're presented uh, with the information regarding uh, the highlights of the OES uh, to help you uh, understand the, the capabilities that we are shipping with each and every release. And we also provide you with the information regarding uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, new updates that are available. So we ship uh, the quarterly OES updates and uh, monthly security updates for the underlying operating system. It also includes information uh, related to the number of uh, nodes in your cluster that may require an update and uh, 
and and the total number of uh, nodes uh, in your cluster. So this is a great way to understand and uh, uh, secure your deployment. At the bottom, uh, you also have uh, references to various uh, material uh, to help you uh, learn and understand OES better. And it also includes uh, links to the community sites uh, for you to interact with uh, us and our other customers. So there's a great chance uh, that the issue that you're facing is already being discussed and the solution is uh, available in the community. Uh, apart from uh, the educational resources, uh, you also have uh, a reference uh, to the Ideas Portal, so, which is a great platform for you to report your new requirements to us. We review uh, the uh, requirements in the Ideas Portal before every release and prioritize them and uh, uh, ship it to uh, you in the subsequent updates. On the right hand side, you have uh, two sections recent actions and the client software downloads, each of which can be collapsed or expanded independently uh, to make space for the other. So under the recent uh, actions, uh, it can be filtered at a different uh, timeline and it includes uh, uh, the list of administrative activities performed by you or other administrators in your organization. This is a way to understand uh, and get a historical view of all the operations that have been performed and also uh, required, if required, you can repeat those operations or get more details about that operation. To fully exploit the capabilities of the uh, OES, you may have to deploy one or more uh, client software uh, uh, pieces. So the client software download section will, will include all the client software bits that are available uh, on, in your deployment. Now let's switch to the storage management, starting with the pools. Uh, you start listing the pools by selecting one or more servers. You do so by either searching for servers or browsing the tree uh, to select the servers. Let me go ahead and search for the servers. I have uh, already looked up uh, servers. So as you can see, I have started getting recommendations based on my previous lookups. I'm going to select one, uh, two servers here now. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, the pools from two different servers are getting listed uh, in this table, and I can manage uh, all of these pools from these two different uh, servers. By default, the pools table contains the name of the pool, uh, the server on which the pool is hosted, the type of the pool, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit and the state of the pool, whether it's active or deactive, and the space-related information. You can also customize the pool, uh, customize the table by adding and removing columns. We have provided the quick uh, options to select all the columns or reset it back to uh, the default set of columns. You can perform operations on the pool by selecting the pool and performing the operation. As you can see, the number of operations depend on the various parameters of the pool. So, for example, the pool which was deactive, deactive had only two options and the pool uh, which is active has more number of operations that can be performed. You can also select uh, more than one pool from either the same server or from different servers and, and you can perform operations uh, simultaneously on those pools. Again, uh, the minimal set of operations that are applicable uh, based on the number of selection is what will be shown under the, under the list of operations. You can switch to the dashboard of a pool by selecting uh, the pool name. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, look up the dashboard of the JNU underscore university pool. So the pool dashboard contains various parameters of the pool uh, like uh, the the, the media type, the block size, uh, the watermark, and so on and so forth. And also it includes information regarding the, the total space used and uh, the, the available space and the space that has been consumed by uh, the deleted files. At the bottom, you have three tables. Uh, the first table contains the list of volumes on this pool. 
uh, and the second and third table contains the list of partitions and devices uh, from which the storage is drawn for this pool. Now let's go back to the pools. So ideally the filters should have already included the servers that I had already selected. So unfortunately it is not working that way today, uh, but it will be fixed uh, in the final builds. So now let's try and create a pool. So when you're creating a pool, you need to first select the device on which uh, you want to create the pool. So let's go ahead and uh, select uh, this device here, SDB device. And uh, let's go to the next step. So this is, uh, let's say, is hosting uh, the data for the finance. So as you can see, as I start typing uh, uh, the pool name, it starts uh, telling me whether the name is, uh, uh, name is following uh, uh, the syntax that is a load. So for example, now it cannot end with an underscore, so hence there is an error and I can't progress from this step now. So now this is exceeding the character limit. So I'm going to just say Acme underscore finance and I'll, that seems to be a valid uh, name and I'm going to type in uh, the description that it contains finance data. So I'm going to move uh, to next step. So as you can see, it gives me a summary of uh, the server uh, that I have selected uh, uh, for this pool and uh, and the pool description and the name of the pool and the device on which this pool is going to be created. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, uh, finish and that gets created successfully. So it says Acme underscore finance got created successfully. So I can see that pool from here now and it is active and I can perform operations on it in the same way. Uh, that uh, we could do on the other pools. Now let's switch to the volumes. So similar to the pools, uh, you have to select uh, the servers on which you want to list the volumes from. So the server 181 does not have any volume. So 182, uh, we can see that all the volumes are hosted on 182 now. So um, again, uh, by default, you have the name of the volume and the pool that is uh, on which the volume is created, the name of the server uh, on which the volume is hosted and whether the volume is active or and the space related information. Again, you have the option to customize uh, the columns based on your uh, requirement. So I can see if the volume is encrypted or not. Uh, and also you have the option of pagination. Uh, it is applicable to pools as well. So if there are more number of elements, then you have the ability to navigate between the pages and uh, uh, manage them. So again, you can select uh, elements from different pages, items from different pages, and, and you can perform operations from here, uh, and it will be applicable to all of the uh, items that have been uh, selected. Again, the operations can be performed against uh, an individual item like this, rename and so on and so forth. Uh, like uh, quotas and dismount or deactivate and delete and so on and so forth. Or, or you can also uh, select uh, more item, one or more items and then op operate from here as well. So in, in, in any of these cases, uh, the operations are going to be limited uh, to uh, the operations that are applicable to all of the selections. Again, you have the option to create the volume from here. So when you're creating the volume, you need to select the pool on which you want to create the volume. So uh, I'll go, I'm going to just, you have uh, two options, either to let the volume to grow to the size of the pool, or you can also specify a custom uh, size. Uh, let's say I just want to uh, let it grow up to 5 GB. So then I can select uh, this new pool. Uh, again, you have the pagination here to help you uh, when you have more number of pools. And now I have selected the uh, pool. So you have the ability to select the features that are applicable to this newly created volume. So the salvage is enabled by default. So you can also enable uh, the user quotas and directory quotas. And if you want to uh, use this volume against Active Directory users, then you can also enable NSS for AD uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to hit, uh, um, I don't have an Active Directory here, let's say I'm going to disable that. So I'm going to hit next. So then you 
have the option to enter the volume name. So again, I'm going to say uh, finance uh, data. So it's going to be mounted on the, uh, at, at this default path. So you can also actually change it if you want to uh, and configure additional parameters like data shredding and what should be the read ahead count and what is the default lookup namespace, whether it's long or Mac or Unix. Uh, so by default, it is long. And when it when it when when the volume gets created, whether you want to activate and mount the volume or not, and whether you want to share this volume for clustering. So that's another option. So let's say we'll enable that. Uh, so on the summary page, we get a, an information of, uh, the, of the pools that we selected for this volume and the name of the volume and uh, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and finish this. So this volume would get uh, successfully created. So the volume will be available uh, for further set of operations. So let's switch back to the presentation. This is the short uh, demo of uh, the new tool where we demonstrated uh, the login screen where you can enter credentials and uh, tree details uh, to log into the direct e directory or you can also use uh, the internal SSO option to authenticate against another identity provider. We saw the default landing page, that's a home page. And uh, we also saw the management of uh, storage uh, when it comes to pools and volumes. So thank you for your time. So if you have any feedback or want to see more of uh, uh, the new console, please write to us on oes at microfocus.com. Thank you.